yeah, it's all goosebumps right now as Morocco uh, fairy tale at the ongoing 2022 FIFA World Cup uh, continues uh, continued on Saturday um, after victory uh, over Portugal in the round of uh, uh, the last eight at the tournament. Uh, <laughs> just a few days ago, uh, they sent home uh, the 2010 winner, Spain. And yesterday again, uh, they sent home another uh, favorite to win the tournament, uh, Portugal. Welcome to yesterday at the World Cup on Niger Super Fans Forum. My name remains Olafemi Ashalu and uh, Kyle Dogundari and James. They are here via video. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Well, thank you very much, Femi. It's a pleasure. Good morning. Yeah, thank you very much, Femi. Yeah, it's, mm. it's been on the show again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kyle, this this um tournament has been um a tournament of belief for the underdogs. Uh, we've seen things that we've never seen before uh, in the history of World Cup, and that, I'm sure you, you that pays credence to uh, what uh, Gianni Fantino, the FIFA president, said. Uh, this is the World Cup. This is the best World Cup with the perfect uh, uh, group uh, group stage because we saw upset. Uh, Saudi Arabia beating Argentina. We saw Japan beating Germany. And we saw Morocco, this is Morocco, uh, beating Belgium. But the fairy tale of this Atlas Lions, Coyote, is something that even if you are the most clairvoyant of all men, no one will have saw this coming in the semifinals now. They will become the first African country in history of the World Cup to play in the last state of the tournament, Coyote. Uh, for me, like I said before the conversation started, I said this was going to be a World Cup like no other. But even me, I never thought it was going to be like this. Nobody saw this coming. Nobody thought uh, when the last four teams are called, an African team will be there. Nobody thought that was going to be possible. But one thing I am sure of is that the standard of the game, for me, is far, far ahead of what we saw in 2018. One, the organization, too, has been, despite all the initial skepticism from people who doubted the ability of the Qataris, we've seen organization which is at a, which is top notch. We've seen a, a competition which is which has retained the status as the single most important uh uh, competition in the in the entire universe and for me as it is can down to the to the final game i'm beginning to wish that we could have another two three four weeks of, of this competition for me because it's been one that i have totally truly enjoyed myself uh, all our favorite teams are, are crashed out so to speak but then you, the football that is left is still mouth watering and i appreciate every other team left in the competition most especially the the moroccans uh let me quickly say something for me when you say they are the first african team to reach this stage that in itself comes with a lot of controversies with some other people saying that the 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 Moroccans claim to be more Arab than they are African. Some <laughs> say yeah, they, I was going to, I was going to talk about that. <laughs> oh, okay. I know you were going to go there, but since I have already talked about it, I might as well continue. Okay, please, that uh, is, yeah. I do not share that uh, that uh, that view that they are more Arab than they are African, as long as the platform from which they qualify for the competition is African. They are one of five CAF representatives, not one of uh, Asia Football Confederation uh, uh, representatives. Nobody can tell me otherwise. Let me, let me say this, I, and I draw parallels here, that it is possible for them to compete as an as a Arab country under Asia, if they so desired. Australia used to call, to uh, compete with Oceania. But then when, when they saw that they were always the big fish in Oceania, but after they had qualified from the Oceania uh, Confederation, they still have to go and play a playoff with another team from another continent. So they decided yeah. to join with the Asia Football Confederation. So now they are part of the Asia Confederation, even though physically they are not located in Asia. Okay. Israel, because of the of the circumstances of their uh, socio-political uh, uh, situation, they are supposed yeah, to they play in Europe. Play, yeah, they are supposed to play from Asia, but decided to play from Europe. So even though physically they are located in Asia, 
but because of their circumstances, they are called, they are they play their qualifiers as part of Europe. So uh, nobody has killed them for it. So as long as the Moroccans play as Africa's representative, nobody is going to tell us different. They have Africans. We are not trying to borrow uh, them. No. No matter how Arab they are, they are still Africans because they are using one of Africa's tickets. So whatever they have mm. done, we are happy for them. We do not want to take away their uh, Arabian identity, but we are saying this is Africa's time, and they are flying the flag of Africa, seven inch. Mm, okay, Kali, you, you rightly uh, put that into the correct words because I remember after the game, the victory over Spain, uh, the, some some players they dedicated their victory to the Arab League. I think only um, uh, Walid Regogi, the coach, was the one who said it was a victory for Africa. I saw some people yesterday; they said they're going to grab their popcorn that Morocco is just. Um, a team on paper for them because they never they really identify with Africa this tournament. Yeah, but they said they rather I prefer to be identified with the Arab League. Okay, James, let, let, let's talk about um, the game against uh, Portugal. James, no one saw that, particularly with the number of injuries uh, Morocco uh, had before the game. We saw people like size he had his, his lab strapped uh, before that game. So a lot of people thought it was going to just be a walk in the park for Portugal. But James, I think this tournament is, I don't know, it, it, it left uh, so, uh, so many of us speechless. James? Yeah, I think, um, you know, before the competition started, we, uh, and I in particular, I've always been critical of the North Africans, you know, okay. that uh, they go to the World Cup and, um, and they also uh, make up the numbers. But I think uh, Morocco took that personal. And they, they shot me. <laughs> what are you going to tender your apology? What are you going to tender your apology? You should do it now. <laughs> it should you should do it now. James, you should apologize <laughs> to Morocco now. <laughs> you know, it's good that, um, that they've gotten to the to this stage. I mean, it goes to show that we have a quality team from Africa who can do this. I mean, I, I never, I thought, um, you know, from our, pre of our pre preview, I thought, um, look, they've gotten to their bus stop. Well, I didn't know that they have something, <laughs> something, uh, you know, hidden. You know? So, I mean, the, the Portuguese never, they never saw it coming. They, they, they just felt maybe the win against Spain was a fluke for Morocco. They never thought that this a, a determined, well-drilled, organized team is not the, the typical African team that will just lose concentration when they get to this stage. They show that they are ready for anything. And getting to the semi-final now, I mean, you cannot count them out as outsiders anymore. They, they did not get to this stage by mistake. Look at the team they, 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 they defeated. They, 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 they beat uh, Belgium. They beat Spain. They beat now. They've beaten um, oh, Portugal. Uh, I don't know if you saw a video of uh, Ronaldo shedding shedding tears as he was walking yeah, off. As he walked down the tunnel. Yeah. I'm telling you, got to show you how how bad. He, he, I don't know the condition he is now. I mean, it was terrible. <laughs> I think some of their players. Some of their players are even accusing uh, FIFA for appointing an Argentine referee. That's Pepe and Bruno Fernandez. That why should they appoint? Why should they appoint an Argentine? Because oh, the three officials in that game were Argentines. Yeah, yeah. They said the VAR referees too. They, they are from Argentina. They are TV so they set up. So I'm mean, telling me all yeah. these ones are just they're just slim to excuse. He had every opportunity, 90 good minutes to to show what you can do. After all, they defeated um, Switzerland. They hammered Switzerland too. So I don't know all this. Uh, excuses that they are giving. They, are, they even played against a Moroccan team that had, uh, just like what Femi said, some players carrying knocks. But, I mean, they showed that they are ready for the game and they got it. Even at, at one nil, I wasn't thinking maybe the Portuguese will still come back. I never knew that that was that was it for them. So, good one for Morocco. Uh, please. Whether they did it for Africa, whether they did it for Arab, that's not even the issue anymore. The most important thing, the thing that is there, that an African team is in the semi-final and that's just the most important thing there. Okay, Kyle, before we talk about uh, uh, the game between England and France, uh, these Moroccans, it seems they came to this tournament to, to retire some persons. Uh, I don't want to uh, name names. Uh, we saw that uh, they got uh, Luis Enrique sacked. He's, he's now in the labor market. Ronaldo, yes, a lot of people have said the tears from Ronaldo yesterday were tears of, is that going to be my last game for Portugal? But, Kyle, what do you think is the strength of this Moroccan team? Where, where, do, where do you think they got this belief from? A team that no one gave the chance. This is a FIFA World Cup. 
not um, a, a, a CAF Confederations Cup, not a, a AFCON or something. This is a FIFA World Cup where you have the best players coming together to play. Where do you think how they, they got this belief from? I mean, basically, I will, I will attribute their, their run, their success to three things so far. Uh, the first is what I've always called, what I, I think I've said that several on this tournament in the preview to the World Cup. The first thing is that they have a uh, organization that is hmm. key for every team. You, are, you must have organization. And organization is something that is foreign to African teams that we do not have. This is probably because most of these players grew up outside Africa. I'm sorry to say this. So their football foundation, the education they had at, at fundamental level is so, so vastly different from the typical African, 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 African player. So it's, and it's helping them bond together so much so that they have the same belief in themselves that they understand the basic rules of football family. Organization, organization, organization. Tactical discipline, tactical discipline, tactical discipline. That's one. Then two, they have they have they have broken down all these perceptions and barriers that um, I remember you and a lot of people talking about the Ghana coach. No, I, uh, sorry, some coaches not having World Cup experience. Tell me what kind of experience does this Moroccan coach have before the World Cup? He was appointed mm. in August or thereabout. Now he's in the semi-finals of the World Cup. That shows you that all this experience thing is sometimes overrated. It is what you can do on the day if you have the players who can transport, uh, who, who can uh, imbibe and put out whatever it is you, 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 you want on the pitch of play. Then the most important weapon that these Moroccans have is what I, I think I put it on social media uh, yesterday while the game was going on. Femi, it is their transition. Femi, when they have the ball, and when they do not have the ball, the moment they, they sit down, allow you to come at them, and they, 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 they dispossess you, collect the ball, and the speed with which they transmit, before you know it, they are they have collected the ball. One, uh, one minute, they are under attack, they are defending deeply, and they get the ball from you. The next thing you see, one, two passes, they are in your own half of the, of the pitch. And that speed, that uh, electrifying pace, everything, this play, the confidence they have on the ball, all of these are the strength of this team. Is it possible for a team to outwit them? Yeah, it is. But now, every step of the way, they are getting it. Then, finally, Femi, they have what I've always called the tournament bounce. That when you are when you get into the tournament, the first, the, yeah, the first one or two results go your way, then you just take it from there. That's what has been working for them now. That so they have this much confidence in their in their abilities that you know what we gone anybody because they have the pass of the tournament tournament behind them and this is working well for them. I hope. I, I think we, also has that too. They showed that last uh, the twenty eighteen World Cup and now yeah. this tournament as well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So for me, you are you are seeing a Moroccan team representing Africa that is not playing like the typical African team. Mm. They are taking it a little bit forward with their players, the kind of players they have now. Luckily for them, they will be thanking their fans that they, they, they first see it to this to this confession. If they have come with the other with the with the former coach, who said you don't know the guy, and it's still tough. Now see what that guy is doing for them. Mm. Sometimes you have to trust your gut instincts. In this things, mm. there, there's no rule book for what you do. Sometimes you just believe, yeah. let's do the right, let's do this. Hopefully, it will lead us out of the tunnel. That's what these uh, Moroccans have done, and that's the standard okay. they've set for every African team now that we have to aspire okay. to. Mm. I think we are, yeah, Kyle, they, I think they've set the, the bar high for all other African teams now, even for for Ghana, Cameroon, uh, for Nigeria, uh, Senegal as well. Yeah, for Ni Nigeria. I don't even know where, where the Super Eagles of Nigeria will start. James, let's talk about uh, the game between England and France. Uh, it is no longer coming home. I think uh, those who will be coming home or will be going home is the three Lions. It was, it was um, never coming in the first place. <laughs> 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 they, they've been singing that song on the long, but yesterday, at Olivier Giroud uh, busted that bubble. Uh, James, um, I, I don't want to talk about Harry Kane. You know, I, I heard that the that, that penalty has been found in the mass this morning uh, because of how sky high he plays the ball. But James, what, what uh, do you think killed England in that game? 
Well, um, you know, we, we've always known the English team. Um, you know, anytime they come up against a decent, to me, they've even met uh, a half decent French team because we check out the most of the players who have who got injured. I mean, I don't think uh, the game would have been that tight if the likes of Benzema, <laughs> um, you know, the top guy. I didn't mean the, the, uh, we have a I don't think the game would have been that tight, but I mean, they were able to 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 work out uh, the result. Then that, that's the thing about England. Um, playing um, what is it called? Uh, when they come up against a side that is ready to to play football, I mean, they always they always found one thing. It was so so sad that they were just um trying to blame the referee that they should have sent uh, Hernandez off, should have done this, should have done that. I mean, I mean, they, they are not they, they don't have that mental mentality. It's just not they, they got the chance. It. They got the, the way at least just, they were the penalty. They, 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 I don't know what they are still looking for. They don't just have that winning mentality. I mean, uh, look at it. The French teams like the Fr uh, France, Germany, Italy. You know, when, when one thing about these teams, there are some games that even if they are not playing well, they will always find a way to win that game. It's not as if the French team were better than uh, the Three Lions uh, yesterday, but they were able to take their chances when it came because chances were very tight for them. Ooh, Mbappe was uh, kind of... Um, um, was non-existent in that game yesterday. Life, but yeah. the, thing is, you know, the big players were able to, to stand out. That's what happened. If, if, if you watch big teams that win tournaments, there are some games that would be so difficult for them, but they will always find a way around it. And that was what France did. The English team, they were, they were just huffing and puffing. They thought maybe they were playing against Senegal, they are playing against, uh, you know, those weaklings yeah. that they normally play against. And once they win those teams... You know, the typical French, uh, the British media, all they would go about hyping the players at this and that, that and this. But they came on stock. They had a penalty to level up. Harry Kane only got no what went, uh, what, 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 what was the problem. Because I, I believe that he was going to score, but uh, gladly, I'm glad that you said they found it. They eventually found the ball. I mean, so they have to return it back to FIFA. Yeah, they <laughs> found it in that this morning, yeah. Exactly. You know, so for me, it's typical English. Um, you know, once, once it doesn't go their way, they always find a scapegoat. So I don't know that they're going to come hard on uh, Harry Kane now. Because remember what happened in the Euros when the likes of Saka, the likes of Rashford, and the Sancho missed. You also how they came down hard on them, but nobody has said anything yet about Kane. Uh, you understand what I'm trying to say, you know? So for me, I wasn't surprised that they're out. They are just the typical English uh, football. They just come, they make all the noise, they tell you that the, the Premier League is the best. They have the best young players. They were even saying Foden and they were even ranking Foden with Mbappé. This is sounding like a conspiracy, James. You know, so I don't know. So for me, I wasn't surprised. I, to be to, to be honest with you, I was so glad that they are out. Because even before the World Cup, the bad press they gave this World Cup. <laughs> in, enough for you to even want them to... Do, I mean, you just came to the World Cup and you want to start telling people how to run their life, how to vote. You know, people will be proud to the World Cup. They'll be making, especially, I don't want to mention the media, the popular media there. You've seen all sorts of things about Qatar, how they've been, uh, they do the accommodation has been so terrible, how this has been, uh, there are so many empty seats, blah, blah, blah. Forgetting that this is to work, you are here to play football, not to teach people morals, you know. So at the end of the day, they've been kicked out, and um, um, this, this, the team who came to play football, they are still left in the competition. So uh, maybe next time they'll be able to learn how to respect okay. other people's uh, views and opinion and focus on the football. Okay. Um, currently, in England, they've now become uh, the country with the highest number of knockouts in the quarterfinals of the World Cup. Seven times now, they've been knocked out. Uh, do you agree with James that they lack the mentality uh, to carry on from then, despite the fact that they have the, the areas of players, the area of players that you know, would, that should even be good enough uh, to win the tournament? They've not won it since uh, they hosted in 1966. And this is how many years after they've not even gone past uh, the semi-final, which they got to in 2018. Do you agree with James that they lack the mentality? Or is it because of is it because the style of English football is not good enough for the World Cup? Uh, absolutely. I think if you, if you, if you take away the, the veneer that, uh, that cover the, the hype about English, which comes with, with, because of the familiarity we, have all, we all have with the English Premier League, and you take the players one one by one, one for one, you will see that actually of the teams, the top, the so-called top teams, the English players will rank lower than others. Forget whatever the English media wants you to believe. <laughs> Femi, that's the truth. Uh, and I think against France, they started like underdogs. 
they were like they catch up against against the French until until France scored because I ordered the penalty. The, the French went back again to score again. They got another penalty. And if you get two penalties in this, in a, in a World Cup quarterfinal game, Femi, I wonder what else you want that you will not be bickering and, and be talking about the referee or the officiating or whatever. No, not many teams get that opportunities. Yes, sir. So for me, I do not I do not buy the the hogwash about officiating, except they are talking about another game. The game we saw, uh, the, I, we, I I saw that the officiating was okay. They had a, a good penalty call, even before the uh, the the VAR. I I treated this is a penalty. Eventually, they got it the first time. They got it the second time. So I am not sure. I want or any of their any of their wala. But having said that, I think they set, they set out in that game as underdogs, so they were playing catch up all through the game. So in that kind of situation, you only get to win by luck. If you already agree in your mind mentally that you are not as good as the other team, like James said, the French team are, are not that strong, especially against England. I didn't see them play. Even in Mbappe did not bring his A game to this team, to this game, and they still won the game, even though it's looking like as if it was tight, having ended at two one. But if this in if this French team play like this, the way they were tentative, always second, always not reacting fast to to second balls and everything, if they do this against a team like Cameroon, I think it is good night for them. I hope. They're going to raise their game because I want a good game against my Cameroon. Uh, sorry, I say Cameroon against Morocco. If they are, if they, if they try this against Morocco, it is good night for them. Although my prayer is that they do this against uh, Morocco, and they will now see that Morocco is not England. And the Moroccans have earned their stripe. They have earned their stay in their spot in that last four. They've defeated Belgium, this number two ranked team in the world. They've defeated Spain, former cha former champions. They, they, they defeated Portugal, the team of the great Ronaldo, the Ronaldo. And incidentally, Spain, Portugal, and Morocco are within touching distance of each other. So they are more or less like neighbors. So they know the key to these other teams. And uh, I think not deviating from uh, from the from the English team, uh, I think they have been in this competition anyway. Maybe you know my opinion. I've always said that they they were the all the world qualifiers because in the group stage they played Iran and USA and uh, which other team did they play? Wales. The Wales. Wales. So for me, these are not your everyday super star teams. All the other teams played bigger teams than them. Then for me, that is basically what I think. But now they've they've seen they've, they've come to where water has finally found its level and they should just go home. And for me, I can assure you, you from this morning, please keep checking the English media. You will see that they will come out in full force against the World Cup, against the officials, against FIFA. And everything that they suppressed because their team was doing well before to see it in all of its glory. Now we cannot continue. Probably yes, next, yes, uh, yes. next, uh, next on the next program, I'm going to share an experience with you guys about what uh, what really transpired at in Russia at the last. Week. I will I will share that with you because we're running out of time now. But definitely, yeah. if if you remind me, I will share that experience with you. Then you see that I am the least impressed with England, and probably you have an idea of why I do not read them at all. Mm, it's it's okay. not about the English team alone; it's about the media and the the people. But I'm not going to give away much until that. We are running out of time now, so I will leave it at that. Okay, so I know uh, Kyle Day and James. I think you guys should watch it because I know the English media they will add both of you to the list of why they lost that game. Yeah, welcome. Like criticism from our criticism no, from welcome. From, <laughs> from both of you guys. Okay, a last one, 30 seconds. James, do you think Cristiano Ronaldo should um call you quit now with the Portuguese national team in 20 seconds? Yes, I think it's our time he, he leaves. I mean, everything is getting uh, a bit messy now. So he should just he should just quit. He has won it all. So he's put you just be putting himself in more deeper, deeper, in more um. Uh, unnecessary criticism and attacks and what have you. You're only getting uh, worse from henceforth now. So 
Um, forget the, the people that are in the TV, they are come at this time, hangs boots because um, uh, the way into the work on me. So he was giving everything, but it was also good. Game. So for me, it's just focused on uh, football. He had enough time to win a European championship. But the captain, he has seen it all at his time to stay on now. Mm, okay. Uh, thank you guys for your incisive analysis on yesterday at the World Cup today. Thank you. Thank you for me. All right. Thank you for me. Okay, so our fans around the world, of course, uh, the 2020 FIFA uh, World Cup in Qatar is still ongoing. And now, uh, in the round of semis, we have uh, Croatia. They'll be taking on Argentina. That's going to be another blockbuster. And, uh, of course, uh, we hope that the fairy tale uh, of Morocco will continue when they take on uh, the French. Now, <laughs> a lot of people have said that maybe this might be uh, the, the, the last bust of uh, all the Moroccans. But they said that against Spain, and they also said that against uh, uh, Portugal, but the Moroccans are still here. So we hope that they will continue to climb the flag of Africa very hard the tournament. Of course, perhaps be the first African country to play in the World Cup or even win it, it is very, very possible. So until we we'll come around again with uh, yesterday at the World Cup, I remain Asha Lulu Bye for now.